In 1974, Texas Instruments introduced the first ever microcontroller, and the first major use of these microcontrollers was in games, including Simon. And suddenly, it was possible to create a game that had lots of playability compared to traditional games. Uh, in original games before this, there were electronic games, but they basically consisted of motors and LEDs, and they weren't that sophisticated. So suddenly these games started appearing in the market, and anybody who is in, uh, is in the age range of about 50, oh my god, I've lost track already, uh, saw these games in the shops, I'm aiming for eight. I might not get it. Oh, I got it. Okay. Right. Bring back the light. <laughs> so now you get the gist of it. Uh, I, I assume that everybody's seen a Simon before. But anyway, uh, these games started appearing in the shops and it's huge. It's, it's a monster. But back then they cost the equivalent of about a hundred dollars. Now let me just tame this, let me tame this image down a little bit because it's quite ferocious. That is slightly better. The yellow is not popping now. So the process that was orig originally used in Simon by MB Games, this one is missing its decal. It's, it's, it's what you get. Uh, you can see the tiny spot of glue that originally held it on has not quite managed to hold it on. But uh, the TMS 1000 appeared in these games and when you went into the shops I mean I, I I really wanted one of these because it was just amazing at the time but the family couldn't afford it my mum and dad did not have much money so instead my mum used to take us into the shops where they had loads of these games on display because the the best way to sell them back then when they first appeared was they just put loads of games littered about and the kids would play them get hooked on the games and then would pest their parents to buy them in my case, my mum just took me into the, the shop to play them. And uh, it was just, as I say, it was immense. It was so radically different. The sounds and the illumination was so radically different. Other games from that era were Merlin and the Little Professor and the sort of the Mastermind game integrated into a little calculator format. There were just loads of electronic games. So... Uh, this video should have started with me fixing this one, but unfortunately I fixed it before the game, the video started. In hindsight, that was a foolish thing to do, but that's okay. I've ordered another dead one from eBay just to actually see if we can fix it from scratch. Uh, but either way, let's open this one and take a look inside and see what games were like back then. So the power for this game was two D cells for the lamps. This was fairly common back then. And a PP3 battery, a little 9 volt battery for the electronics. It's just basically, it was the first games and that's just what they did. And one of the most coveted versions of Simon on the, inter of, well, available at all, is the one that has the original TMS-1000 processor in it because that was the first microcontroller. It was so advanced that you had to use specialist program equipment to uh, program the microcontroller, then send the file away to emulate it, uh, to send the file away to Texas Instruments, and then they mask program the microcontroller for you. You couldn't actually program it uh, yourself. And it wasn't long before this game was an absolutely huge success. This game was so massive that uh, they quickly switched to using a dedicated chip, a custom-made uh, chip, an ASIC, application-specific integrated circuit. But there are original uh, versions with the original microcontroller, so look at the amount of plastic in this. We've got the, the brightly coloured buttons with... Little spring-loaded plungers. Well, rubber plungers for these ones, but a spring-loaded one for that. I wonder why that is. Maybe that's because uh, it's the start button, so they reckoned it was going to get much heavier use, but they used rubber for the other ones. Then we get these huge sections of plastic, and they've got a couple of positions. Maybe they intended originally to have two switches, but they found that one was enough. Everything in the games industry is down to cost 
optimization. But the lovely big chunky plastic panels that light up are just absolutely amazing. They were amazing then, they're still amazing now. You can buy these on eBay. Uh, a dead one will set you back in the UK around about £20. Or, in the case of collectors selling their collection, uh, they might want uh, £160 for one that is held together inside with sticky tape because they can't bear to part with it. So here is the dedicated chip. The MB4850 that was made specifically for this game based on its success. This chip here, the SN75494N, is a buffer chip. It kind of predates the ULN2007, the ULN2803. It predates the sort of Darlington driver chips, and at the time it was just basically a, an output chip for these things. Um, other components you'd find on board for this, either an oscillator or a reset input with combining a capacitor or resistor, I would guess, and maybe a resistor in series of this loudspeaker. The lamp holders are odd. The lamp holder, I've never seen a lamp holder like this. It's a printed circuit board mounting lamp holder designed to take the little wedge lamps that just slide in. Now, this is odd because I bought... Uh, the electronics magazines had uh, the surplus circuit boards and things like that. You know, they had companies like GN Bull in the UK who sold packets of components and you got a pile of junk but it was treasure when you bought it at the time but one of the companies was selling these circuit boards with uh, with four lamps on it and buttons and it said I think they did imply it was the Simon game but they were screwing lamps I wonder if that was the original TMS 1000 because I bought one and the fault it had was there was a big crack across it and I soldered it together connected wires on and got it playing as a game uh, so I wonder if that was a TMS-1000. Interestingly, see this little crinkly plastic thing down here? That's odd. That's nice. That is a bit of tape covering a spare lamp. That is really nice that they included a spare wedge lamp. But it makes sense. So when I dug this out, I probably got this from a boot sale somewhere. When I dug it out, uh, it was just not playing at all. It was like very erratic. And I did a couple of things. I cleaned the contacts, the battery contacts. Pleasingly, they don't show signs of corrosion. Uh, one of the worst things of these things is the batteries all being corroded to bits because they've leaked and all the contacts are corroded. In this case, it was intact. But these little buttons... Uh, let's whip the circuit board out. Let's get this paper shield off and see what's underneath. But the, uh, the buttons are presumably very simple. Is it a wire link underneath or is it just another metal contact? I shall look from the side and see. I don't really want to desolder things because this is a precious piece of history and very playable. When I first managed to get one from a car boot sale, I've got another one somewhere uh, that may be intact. Uh, it was, uh, I played it to death, like literally to the point that I actually completed the hardest level. What do we got? What do we got under these? Oh, we've got little round contacts. Hold on. It's little round disc contacts under these. Look at the dust. Could have cleaned it off. A little 8 ohm speaker, 0.2 watt. MB Games logo on the back of the circuit board. Traditional, it's a silicon resin bonded paper circuit board, which is presumably why the other one cracked, because they're, they're quite fragile. Uh, with, it, it seems quite good quality actually. It's machine made. It's like a, it's obviously a machine soldered. It's gone through a, a solder bath. A little bit of a corrosion or mark in the back. It's not bad. I'd expect these things to be damaged when, at parties when they'd be passed around during a party and then drinks spilled on them from that era because they were. And I do see residue around the screws that kind of suggests that maybe it's had some experiences in the past. Not really sure. Um, what's worth seeing about this? Okay, the way I fixed it. I cleaned the contacts and I uh, got a bit of paper. Hold on, let me just demonstrate. Paper. Ordinary paper is slightly abrasive. 
If you slip it between contacts, this includes the old-fashioned relay contacts often found in pinball machines. They used to sell cleaning strips that were like this. You can push the paper through, press the button down, and drag the paper back. Put it through, press the button down, drag the paper back. And this is clean now, but when I originally did it with another bit of paper, it was really dirty and contaminated, so that was a, a sign that the contacts were bad. And doing this to all the buttons brought this game back, it reincarnated it. Because it's clear, well I can see sort of grime, sort of rust on top of the buttons. I wonder if this has been exposed to liquid. I don't see liquid in the circuit board. But this uh, is a great way of cleaning contacts without really damaging them. It's, it's just abrasive enough when you put your pressure on it to actually clean it. With these switches, uh, just run them backwards and forwards, is how you clean them. Just sort of contact wiping. I suppose you could use deoxid type things as well. There's not much circuitry, is there? Uh, I can see here, that is the classic 39 ohm resistor in series with the speaker, and it's got a diode across the speaker itself to protect the chip. Um, this is probably, I would guess, just a coupling chip. No, it's, it's actually going straight to the chip. I wonder if that's a timing... But it's not got the components I'd normally associate with it. This is a dedicated chip. It's showing slight signs of corrosion on the circuit board round about here. Uh, I will provide links down below because that is showing signs of corrosion. Something has happened to this circuit board in the past that it's uh, had an unpleasant experience, but it's actually survived it, which is fine. I don't think that was just flux. It, it felt fluxy, but it's too dirty. There was something... Something else has happened there. That's sticky. Yeah, that's not normal. Yeah, this circuit board has had a... This circuit board has had... Something happen to it. I would guess maybe drink spillage. Oh yeah, over there there's a bit of corrosion as well. Yeah, it could do the clean up. I shall clean it up. Uh, but I shall provide links that... Uh, because this game was so popular... Oh, look at the back of the contacts here. They are corroded. Has someone cleaned these up later on? Do you know what's interesting here? Is that these contacts have a... They're kind of trapped between the plastic by a couple of screws on this. So... Oh, it's these. That's how they've made the connection onto the circuit board and something has happened in the past. Maybe a battery has leaked but it's avoided corroding the contact on the actual contact face and it's actually leaked down into the base. And that has caused problems. I shall give that a clean. But this game is so popular. I mean, it's just, it's autism central. It's just such a pleasing game because of the patterns and colours. This has been reverse engineered to absolute death. Not only are they still making clones of this game in various forms, but uh, it has been reverse engineered to the point that this chip here has been uh, decapped and has been reverse engineered. And the original TMS-1000, I believe, may have been ROM dumped as well. That's fascinating that they've gone so far. Um, on one hand, I would say it'd be nice to convert this to LED, but on the other hand, this is an original vintage game. And although it may be have be showing signs of, you know, having been through the wars as such, I'm going to keep it as the original game because uh, it's kind of important to actually do that with games from this era. Oh uh, yes, this thing is stuff in the bottom. Maybe I should have cleaned it out beforehand, but then maybe I shouldn't have, because then we can discover it together. Yeah, this is seen, this is seen parties and child, ch I was going to say child abuse, that's not right, is it? Uh, but abuse by children, uh, when they've been playing it, as one does with toys. But there we go. That's fantastic. What a game. Uh, very enjoyable to play, despite its seeming simplicity. Uh, but not that simple because it does very long sequences. And the fact it looks like a spaceship and it has these big, chunky, plastic buttons that light up just makes it fantastic. I don't think, you know, I don't think modern games have the same... Oh, that's just some so old-fashioned, doesn't it? Modern games, they try and cheap too much. They, It's not... The scale of this one, the fact it was really huge and that those big spaceship illuminated pads on it just made it special. So there we go. Uh, Simon, now your task is to go down into the description 
and follow those links because they will take you down a rabbit hole of discovery on the internet about the Simon game because it was so radical at the time. And, uh, well, it has been, well, it's just thoroughly featured on the internet because it's such a special game. So go down into the description and follow that rabbit hole.